I'm a third year medical student on my OB-GYN rotation right now, specifically the gynecology oncology portion, but I used to be a professional MCAT tutor. And now I run this business and this channel with my brother John to give away some free advice and some paid advice. But today I wanna to talk about when to incorporate practice questions into your MCAT prep. We get a ton of questions on like, hey, can you look at my schedule? Like, am I doing all the things I should be doing? And I think one of the big like black boxes in that is like when to incorporate practice questions how many to do, should I hold off until I get some content review, all those kinds of things I think are what students are mainly struggling with when they ask for scheduling advice. So when I was brainstorming to make this video, I was kind of comparing it to how I'm studying right now as a med student, because I could tell you guys what I did back when I was studying for the MCAT, but my study skills have only gotten better, so why would I not incorporate that extra stuff on top? I do practice questions immediately. Right now, of course, the mainstay of studying for like shelf exams in step two is practice questions, but even back when I was in my preclinical years, which are much more comparable to studying for the MCAT, you're having to learn material and then take sort of a test at the end. I was doing practice questions immediately. And I think that this pays off for two big reasons. And one is you kind of get a baseline of your score, right? It's almost like taking a diagnostic exam and you can track your progress over time. So you get immediate feedback like, okay, I am, you know, for the past several days, I've scored really low on CP. Like I've been going up a little bit in my BB. I feel like I'm getting questions that test on the same topics over and over and I'm starting to get them right now, but I'm getting questions over and over on the same topics on CP and I'm still getting them wrong. So that immediate feedback is immensely helpful. Helpful. Not even a tutor could tell you how, like, the things you know exactly as well as a test can tell you. It'll also tell you if you're missing some sort of like strategies. And this may take a little bit of help and we have a ton of videos on our YouTube about how to review practice questions, whether it's cars or just a full length exam or whatever, you can go on our like, YouTube and find, just type in like IFD review MCAT or something like that. And you can see how we sort of break questions down into what sort of strategies they're using or tell you, okay, if you're reviewing a question and, it, and you didn't understand the question stem or you didn't understand the answer choices or you didn't find the thing in the passage. Like here's all the different strategies you can use to sort of prevent that next time. But if you're not taking practice questions immediately, then you're not gonna be able to practice those strategies. And some of those things take a lot of time to sort of get better at, some of those strategies do. Similarly with cars, I usually talk about cars and the sciences as two separate entities because I mean, they basically are. They're using completely different parts of our brain and completely different strategies. There's a little bit of overlap where like if you kind of increase your reading skills, then you can kind of get better at both of them, right? But otherwise, they take completely different strategies, but you need to do practice questions on both of them because otherwise, how will you know if you're not gonna be good at cars? Like there's no content to study for cars, right? So you need to start those questions immediately. You might end up sucking at it like I did and you're gonna have to put it in a lot of work to sort of uh, increase your score. So one, I think it gives you that immediate feedback. So that's why you should start practice questions immediately. But also there's this aspect of reviewing questions that I think is really underutilized. And it's the fact that when you're reviewing a question, they're basically telling you, hey, the double AMC asks questions like this, if it's a double AMC test, you know? When they are testing you on Michaela Smith and kinetics, this is the verbiage that they're going to use to describe it. Or especially, this is really obvious in psych -soch. And I know this because me and John literally just combed through all of the double AMC exams to make our strategies course. But regardless, they will say certain words to mean certain terms in psych -soch, And it is immensely helpful to know the exact verbiage that they're gonna use to describe that sort of topic. Cause then you're not wondering, oh, how do I translate what I know an availability heuristic to be to what the MCAT kind of, how they phrase it. You don't have to, you're given what the MCAT says about availability heuristics and then you can work backwards and be like, okay, I need to have in my head that that's one of it, what an availability heuristic is. And if there's a discrepancy between the two, obviously go with the double AMC. I, no one cares if you know what an availability heuristic is past the MCAT. So just take whatever the double AMC says, lock it in your head. This reminds me of something in medical school called illness scripts. And what an illness script is, is a like clinical vignette, which is basically just like a one-liner for a patient. I'll give an example in a second. 
but it's a clinical vignette of a patient who's presenting with a classic history, signs, and symptoms of a certain disease process. So for instance, I asked ChatGPT to make me a bunch of clinical vignettes for abnormal uterine bleeding because I am an OB-GYN right now and I have a lot of patients who have that. So they're saying that a clinical vignette for endometrial cancer, for example. So it's a 58-year-old postmenopausal woman who presents with vaginal bleed for two weeks. No history of hormone replacement therapy, but has a BMI that's a little bit higher, history of hypertension on TVUS, the endometrial stripe is thick then you do a biopsy. Like that's a classic history, like an older lady who has a higher BMI, who has a normal pelvic exam, but an abnormal ultrasound. Like that's, that's just classic endometrial cancer. And they're given the same symptoms as everything. So I say all of this to say like illness scripts are incredibly useful to have in your head. Like, okay, when I hear of a patient who comes in, who has that age and that history, and they're telling me these symptoms, it's going to automatically trigger in, the, in my brain, like, oh, I need to be thinking about endometrial cancer in this patient. And when you get into med school, you'll start incorporating that kind of stuff. But it's, I think that's what I'm saying. Like I'm taking the things I'm learning from med school and telling you guys to do it. Because when you guys get a question on the MCAT, that is your illness script. So I literally just pulled up question number one of the BB section of the scored free practice exam on the double mc and it's like a good example of what i'm talking about they're asking you this big long question and basically they're wanting you to figure out if they're talking about adaptive immunity humoral immunity innate immunity that kind of stuff it's a, like an immune system question and so the reason like the answer is adaptive immunity and the reason why you know that is it tells you in the description or it'll tell you on a, our youtube channel we'll point it out as well but it's because they mentioned like b and t cells and specifically i think the thing for the question was talking about t cells and that's just adaptive immunity so it's like now you know that when the mcat is talking about adaptive immunity they're talking about t cells and b cells when they're talking about t cells and b cells they're talking about adaptive immunity like you know that those things are connected in your head and you can even get a more specific verbiage on the psych so section if i mean if i wanted to go comb through all of these but you're not going to get that unless you start practice questions early and so now you know that you don't have to know all these different things about adaptive immunity. There's a billion different things to know about it. You just need to know that's T and B cells. It's gonna, and there's a couple other things. It's like John, when John and I wrote our high yield book, we put a section at the end of every chapter that's like how the MCAT tests. And that's not like crazy that we did that. We literally just kind of thought about like, what are the, what's the verbiage that the AAMC usually uses to, to ask about this? What are the connections that they typically make between different topics? You know, that's, that's literally how we came up with that section. And we just did a bunch of them because we've done a bunch of tests. So you need to do those tests. You need to put in that work because then you will start to come up with how the MCAT tests not only the stuff that's in the high yield book, but also the low yield stuff. Like just, you'll start to realize those patterns for everything. So long story short, do practice questions immediately. You can put it off for a couple weeks if you have like a long time to study, but my question to you would be like, why? Like you can either study stuff without a game plan, like without knowing how the AMC is asking questions on it, or you could study it with a game plan. So I think you should study it with a game plan. So you're not learning all this like esoteric crap that they're not going to talk about and they're not going to ask about. When students buy our high yield course with, that comes with the U world, I've had some students that have delayed activating the U world and that's fine. If you have another source of like questions or if you just can't afford an extension, but a lot of times what I'll tell students to do, and I get no money off of doing this, by the way, I'm just saying, I would go ahead and activate UWorld like immediately. You only get it for three months and you have access to the high yield course for six months, but say you're studying, say you're studying in six months. So you'll have access to the high yield course the whole time and you'll have three months worth of UWorld questions. You can buy a pretty cheap extension on UWorld. Like I, it's not like double the price and you can just extend it for as long as you need for, you know, a month or so until you start going into just double AMC materials. Cause I think, you know, I've said this in a million videos, you should do double AMC uh, materials at the end of your prep, like pretty much solely. But anyway, that's what I would do. That's what I'm doing in med school. It's working pretty well. So that's why I'm telling you guys.
Let me know if you thought this video was helpful or this information was helpful, whatever other kinds of like MCAT questions or whatever. If anything you've ever wanted to ask an MCAT tutor, you can ask me and John down in the uh, comments below. Check out what projects we have going on in the description. Look at this 3D printed version of my cat. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.